I know you all are sad that you're going to have to stop doing derivatives using one of the two definitions. And probably equally sad that we're going to move past those power rules that are insulting your intelligence because they're too easy onto something with a little more pizzazz and excitement. You may discover as you do these problems that you might want to turn your paper sideways because as you'll recall from last year, some of these can get pretty lengthy. Because yes, we're going to talk about the product, quotient, and chain rules. Okay. To give you a little reminder of why do we need them? In this first problem, I have two simple quantities being multiplied, 3x squared times 4x to the fifth. And yes, we could just multiply them very quickly, which would give us 12x to the seventh, and then do the power rule on them, which would indefinitely be the fast and most efficient way. But I want to point out to you that if I give you bigger quantities, if you had a term with, or a quantity with five terms times a quantity with four terms, you wouldn't want to multiply that together first and then do the derivative. We'd rather be able to do the derivative before we multiply it. So I want to show you why just doing power rule doesn't work. So if I took the derivative of each of these two individual functions here, the 3x squared becomes 6x, and the 4x to the 5th becomes 20x to the 4th, you'll notice if I then multiply those together, I get 120x to the 5th. That is not the same thing as 84x to the 6th, and we know the 84x to the 6th is right. Unfortunately, you can't just take the derivative and multiply and get it to work. Instead, you need the product rule. And hopefully you'll remember the product rule which says you write the first function down and multiply times the derivative of the second one plus write the second function down and multiply by the derivative of the first one. So in words, we called that first d second plus second d first. And the good news is you don't need to simplify your answers when you do the derivative. And I'll talk about that a little more once we do this next one. So here uh, in green, I have two three-term expressions, not anything major difficult, and I want to do the derivative of them. I notice that, okay, I'm multiplying, so I should do the product rule, which means I should start out by writing the first one down, don't change it, just copy it down, times the derivative of the second, and I'm sure you're all out there reciting with me that this would be negative 12x to the negative 5, remember you're subtracting one from the power, plus 2 thirds x to the negative 2 thirds, and the derivative of 5 is 0. Now, am I done? No, I did first the second, but then I still need to do time, or excuse me, plus the second, which is copy it all down, times the derivative of the first, which I need to be able to see the first here. So the derivative of the first would be 6x to the fifth minus 24x to the seventh technically plus zero. Okay, so the point is, I got the derivative figured out. I have my product rule, but why don't I have to simplify it? Well, if you recall, our main reason for doing derivatives is that they give us the slope of the tangent line. So if I need the slope of the line at, say, x equals 2, which is going to take less time? Sub 2 into this great big long derivative we just did and come up with the slope or simplify it all and then sub 2 into it to get the slope. It's crazy to go to the trouble to simplify it. If we can simply substitute the number in there and get the slope, we could spend way more time on the algebra to simplify it, which is why we won't be simplifying these and you should definitely be looking at your answer sheets 
to check your answers on these, not the answers in the back of the book, because the book did simplify the problem. Okay, that's product rule. Then you'll remember we hit the quotient rule for the same reasons. If you can't multiply, you can't do division by just the power rule. We need another rule. And I know some of you remember the quotient rule because you were reciting it the other day. And if you recall, you take the bottom function times the derivative of the top. It's very much like product rule. But you subtract and take the top function times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. In words, and yes, I hear, didn't hear it already, people out there singing, oh yes, it's low d high minus high times the derivative of the low all over low squared. So now you have a lovely quotient rule to follow. And if you're looking at this next problem, you're going, oh, great, trig functions. But, of course, we know the derivatives of our trig functions. And if you don't, they're out here on the board beside you. So we're just going to look at this and go, hey, I've got division happening. I need to do a quotient rule. So I simply need to do low, write it all down, minus the derivative of the high. Be careful, every time you're multiplying, you need to start a new quantity. Parentheses are probably the number one thing we make errors on with these. So now if I do the derivative of the high, I have to do the derivative of 4 sine, which becomes 4 cosine, minus 15x to the fourth. So there's low d high minus, I copy the high down, and if I do the derivative of the low, well, okay, that's going to be 16 ninths x2, I subtract 1, that's going to be the negative 7 ninths, and then, whoops, went too far, I have to do the derivative of cosecant. It's a trig function starting with co, so I know it's going to actually, while there's a subtraction here, derivative of cosecant is negative, so it'll actually become plus cosecant x cotangent x. And there would be my low d high minus high d low, all over, simply write the low down, and square it. Once again, we're not simplifying. So there's quotient rule. And then if you recall, the one that probably caused the most confusion is our good friend, the chain rule. So chain rule is when you have functions in functions. When we have our f of g, or our, in this case, I have f of g of h. And the question is, do you start on the outside or the inside? And hopefully you're out there screaming, start from the outside. And you work your way, you burrow your way into the inside. So if I were to take the derivative of the outside, I would be doing the derivative of function f. But the strange part is you have to leave g and h inside it. Then we multiply and we move inside it to the next function, which is g, we do the derivative of g. Anything that's inside it must stay inside of it, so h stays inside of it. And then we move in one more time, always looking at the original problem, we would need to do the derivative of function h. You burrowed your way into the middle. Now, that doesn't seem particularly easy to understand when you're looking at it in formula form. And unfortunately, it doesn't really have any word way to describe what you're doing. You're simply starting on the outside and working your way in. This first problem is a fairly nice chain rule, nothing super duper fancy. We have a quantity to the eighth power. So clearly, the outermost thing happening here is the eighth power. If that were just plain 8x to the seventh, you would all just do the derivative as 
56x to the 6. So in our case, we do the same thing. Actually, I said that wrong. If you had just x to the 8th, you would have gotten 8x to the 7th. So we're doing the same thing, except when we put our 8 out front, we have a whole quantity that's still sitting on the inside to the 7th. Don't change the inside. Whatever you do on chain rule, never change the inside. Now, keep your eye on the original problem. We've done the eighth power that was outside it. The next thing inside is the quantity. So when you times, you're starting a parenthesis, you're starting a new quantity, and you're getting 63 to the x to the eighth minus 15x to the fourth, because that's the inner function doing its derivative. And in this case, that's all the farther we go, because we've made it to the inside. This second problem I have here is a little more interesting. It does have a root on it, and hopefully you'll remember that when you have a root on it, you have to change that root into an exponent. So we would actually have to take this entire problem and put a giant one-fourth power on it because it's the root of the one-fourth power. Now, if you, when you start your derivative, you have to ask yourself, what's the outermost thing happening? And the outermost thing is the whole quantity to the one-fourth. So I'm putting the one-fourth on the outside. I am copying it all down. Do not change the inside. To the, okay, hopefully somebody said it, you subtract one from the power, I would have a negative three-fourths power. So once again, keep your eye on the original problem up here in blue. You all can't see me pointing, but I'm pointing. Now, you'll notice when you go to move to the inside, you have a quantity to the ninth power minus 5x to the 11th. Since that minus is in there, you need to start a new parenthesis or bracket because you have a new quantity. However, we work left to right as we work inside there. So the first thing we deal with is the quantity to the ninth power. So on that one, I have to do another chain rule because there's a ninth power outside it. I go 9, write it all down to the eighth. Now the big question is, do I keep going and do the derivative of the inside of this, or do I go on to the 5x to the 11th? You have to burrow your way all the way to the inside of this first quantity. So we have to times, we have to finish our chain rule on this quantity to the ninth. So now I have to do the derivative of the inside, which is going to be two terms. So I need another parenthesis. And I would have my 3x squared plus 14x. That's the derivative of the inside. I no longer have a power on the outside. I have now burrowed my way to the middle of this quantity to the ninth power. Then I go ahead, moving left to right, go to the next term, which would be just a simple 55x to the 10th. And you would have made your way all to the way to the inside of the entire problem. So problem with chain rule, figuring out what order to do some things in is the trickiest part. Okay. So now the real fun comes in for you all when you get to mix the rules together. And what happens when we actually combine product quotient chain rules? So I'm going to stop this and save it and then do these last two problems.